On June 1, 1921, nine-year-old Eldoris McCondici was awakened by her mother. What her mother said next, she never forgot. She says, we have to go out, get out. I said, she says, the, the white people are killing the colored people. Eldoris grew up in the Greenwood area of Tulsa, a buoyant, bustling community of some 10,000 African Americans. There were schools, churches, stores, theaters, and a hospital. It was a place where, for African Americans, the American dream was working. Scott Ellsworth is a Tulsa native. He's been searching for the truth of what happened here most of his life, reporting his findings in a new book, The Groundbreaking. Something happens in an elevator in an office building in downtown Tulsa between a 19-year-old shoe shiner who's African American named Dick Rowland and a 17-year-old white elevator operator named Sarah Page. A scream from Page leads to Rowland's arrest the next day. By that evening, a lynch mob gathered outside the courthouse where Rowland was jailed. The hours go by. The lynch mob is 100, 200, 500, 800 people going. Word gets to Greenwood, and a group of black World War I veterans show up to help the sheriff defend Roland. They're turned away. As they are leaving, an elderly white man went up to a tall black vet and said, where are you going with that gun? A tussle ensues, a shot goes off, and uh, the massacre begins. The veterans retreat to Greenwood with the mob in pursuit. Gun battles erupt, but somehow it is quiet overnight until the next morning. All of a sudden, there's a, a whistle that goes off, and at that point, this white mob starts walking towards Greenwood. Eldoris and her family flee, running north up a set of railroad tracks. The crowd was just the whole breadth of the railroad track on the sides and down the middle. The residents of Greenwood try to defend their neighborhood, but they don't have a chance. The National Guard sprays the residents with machine gun fire, and it gets worse. You have something new up in the air, and its airplanes start flying over Greenwood. There is evidence, and I believe this firmly, that at least on one of the airplanes, uh, a co-pilot is dropping sticks of dynamite down on Greenwood. This airplane was up, just raining down the bullets, and I could see them, and I heard them, and I was so frightened. Greenwood is left a smoldering ruin. 9,000 people left homeless. The dead uncounted. Estimates range from 75 to 300. Eldoris lived until 2010. Her granddaughter, Joy McCondici, keeps her story alive. What did Tulsa lose by having that entire neighborhood destroyed? The glory of the bright city shining on the hill. Eldoris and other survivors gave testimony to the Tulsa Race Riot Commission, a commission that ultimately recommended reparations for the survivors. The state had a great opportunity and they turned it down. Instead, they gave each survivor a gold-plated medal. A sorry substitute for the enormous loss. Why should the sins of the father be visited upon the son? Mm-hmm. Well, I tell you why, because the, the, the wealth of the father went along with the sins of the father, and that wealth was visited upon the son. A lingering question is where the victims were buried. The commission identified three potential mass grave sites. One has yielded a dozen caskets, but there's another site never filmed before that has Scott's attention, near a homeless encampment above the Arkansas River. In 2002, a retired Tulsa police officer named Bob Patty told us about being shown a photograph showing a trench with bodies in it. You could see a steam shovel behind it. So it's our supposition that it's here. And the homeless are very much convinced that there is something evil in the canes right there. Kevin Ross is chairman of the Mass Graves investigation. Do you feel like Tulsa has come to grips with this very dark day 100 years ago? I wouldn't say grip. I think Tulsa has come to make that first step. Joy McCondici will be taking her own steps to come to terms with the past, organizing a century walk for June 1st, retracing the same route her grandmother took some 100 years ago.
we're going to walk a mile in their shoes as they escaped on this Midland Valley Railroad track. That's the only way I think I can um, make my grandmother proud. Those thousands that escaped off those railroad tracks were then put in the equivalent of, of internment camps for some time before they were let go again. Well, what this, a, please, go ahead. There's a million questions. Uh, well, I have a million I just, answers. What about the, the people there now, Harry? I mean, I, you know, I know in the, in the years after. There's a tiny little piece yeah. of that neighborhood left, a couple, a block and a half maybe, on two sides of the street. And the other side is all, was almost all flattened, right? There's a giant branch campus of Oklahoma State University there, mm. right? And otherwise, a lot of open territory. It's, um, you know, it's a, there's so many sins, yeah. right, that we have committed as white Americans against our black brethren. But as they go, this is as bad as it gets. Well, and it's multi-generational mm -hmm. impact. Right. It just goes on and on. When you talk about a neighborhood that had so much pro just promise for her to say that was the shining mm -hmm. city on the mm -hmm. hill yeah. and to have it be destroyed and what that has wrought over the generations. I know so many white Oklahomans who of my age and even, uh, you know, a couple of decades younger, said we never heard about never it. Never heard about it. Never, never knew And the it. reparations question is so disheartening. I mean, there was a chance to try to make things a little bit right, a and you get a medal. Hand, a yes. tiny handful of survivors, yes. right? Yeah. Here's your medal. Yeah. yeah. All right. Harry, thank, thank you. you. NBC News Now has a documentary, yes. and there's a lot of, of, of documentaries that are out now. Okay. We invite you to go out there, take a look, learn what you need to learn. And right. The documentary that Harry just mentioned on the Tulsa Massacre, it's called Blood on the Black Wall Street. Uh, Tremaine Lima, good friend and colleague. I spent a lot of time on that, but it's going to stream tomorrow on NBCnews.com and NBC News Now. It's going to be available on demand starting Sunday on Peacock as we remember what happened in Tulsa 100 years ago. Thanks for having us do that, Harry. Yeah.